What's up, I'm Vin and I'm showing how to evaluate a piecewise function. So question one, we have f of x and we wanna find these few function values here. And the big idea for these questions, let's say when I'm finding something like f of negative two, is to think about where is the x value going? Where does it belong? So something like x equals negative two. I look at this part of the function here, the inequalities, and first we have to answer the question is negative two less than zero? So is negative two less than zero? Or is negative two greater than or equal to zero? Which statement is true? And you think about this, the first statement is true here. This one is good, this one is no good. So what that tells us, since negative two is less than zero, we're gonna plug in x equals negative two to this part of the function over here. So this is gonna be, we're gonna have negative two in parentheses squared, and this is gonna give us negative two squared is four. Okay, so that's the value here for f of negative two. Something like f of negative one, we could go through the same thought process. We ask ourselves, is negative one less than zero or is negative one greater than or equal to zero? And since negative one is less than zero, once again, we're gonna plug into the top piece. We're gonna plug in the x over here where x squared is. So we're gonna have negative one in parentheses squared and this works out to positive one. Now we plug in zero. But when we think about zero, we have to ask ourselves, is zero less than zero or is zero greater than or equal to zero? And now the x values are satisfying the second row. So since x equals zero belongs here, this is the part of the function we're gonna now plug into. So we're gonna go zero plus two is equal to two. So f of zero is equal to two. And then for the next part here, we have f of three. So now we have to ask ourselves, where does x equals three belong? And x equals three is a value that is greater than or equal to zero. So we're gonna plug in three to the bottom piece here. We're gonna have three plus two is equal to five. So this is the function value f of three. And then finally we have f of five is equal to, five is greater than or equal to zero. So we're gonna plug into the bottom piece and we're gonna have five plus two is equal to seven. Question two, we have g of x, and we wanna find these function values here. So we have g of four first. So we're asking ourselves, where does x equals four belong? And x equals four is greater than or equal to one. So we're gonna plug four into this piece over here. So we're gonna have square root of four. We're just replacing this x with four, and the square root of four is equal to two. So this is g of four equal to two. And then we have g of one next. g of one, we have to ask ourselves, where does one belong? One is greater than or equal to one. So we're gonna plug in one to the bottom piece. We're gonna have square root of one is equal to one. So that would be G of one. And now G of zero, G of zero, we have this inequality over here in the middle. Zero is between negative one and positive one. Okay, so when you have an inequality like this, a compound inequality in this form with the less than less than, that just means X is between these two numbers. So since zero satisfies this part of the function, the inequality over here, we're gonna plug zero into the middle piece here. So we're gonna have zero plus three, and this is equal to three. And then after this, we have g of negative one. So g of negative one, we look, and we have to ask ourselves, is negative one between negative one and one? That's not a true statement. And we look over here, is negative one less than negative one? That is also not true. And then negative one is not greater than or equal to positive one. So negative one doesn't satisfy any of these inequalities. So if we try to plug in somewhere, this would be a very dangerous bear trap, okay? So we actually have to say here that g of negative one is undefined, okay? So g of negative one is undefined. And the reason being that the values for x here, the domain, does not include x equals negative one. Okay, if I were to look at the number line, and let's say I look at these transition points at negative one and positive one, if I shade in x is less than negative one, I would go open and shade to the left. And if I had x is between negative one and positive one, I would put open circles and shade everything in between. But then x is greater than or equal to positive one would close this circle and shade everything to the right. So one thing I wanna point out here is the domain of g of x is all x values except negative one, okay? So that's why g of negative one is undefined. So now we have g of negative three and we have to ask ourselves, 
where does x equals negative 3 belong? And it belongs in the top row because negative 3 is definitely less than negative 1. So we're going to plug in negative 3 to this piece over here. So we're going to have negative 3 to the third power plus 4. And for this part, we have a negative base and we're going to an odd power. So that means our result here is going to be negative. We have negative 27 and then plus 4. And then negative 27 plus 4 is negative 23. So this would be the value for, I'll just rewrite it, g of negative 3. And now one more, g of negative 4 is equal to negative 4 belongs in the top row because negative 4 is less than negative 1. We can even verify the other rows here. Negative 4 is not between negative 1 and 1. And negative 4 is definitely not greater than or equal to positive 1. It belongs in the top row, so we're going to plug into this piece. We're going to have negative 4 to the third power and then we're gonna have plus four. So this works out, we would have, the math I'm doing in my head is, this is negative, but I do four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. So we're gonna have negative 64 plus four, which is gonna simplify to negative 60. Okay, and once again, this is the value for g of negative four. So question three, our last question, and for this type of piecewise function, this is the not equal to equal to kind. And for this, we have h of, let's say, negative 5 first. And we have to ask ourselves, is negative 5 not equal to positive 2, or is negative 5 equal to positive 2? And this makes sense for the top row. Negative 5 is not equal to positive 2. So we're going to plug negative 5 in for x. So we're going to have negative 5 squared minus 4 over negative 5 minus 2. And this is going to give us, we're going to have 25 minus 4 over negative seven. And if we do the subtraction here, this gives us, we're gonna have 21 divided by negative seven, which is negative three. So this is our first function value. This is our value for h of negative five. And then h of zero, zero is not equal to two. So we're gonna plug zero into the top row. Zero equals two is a false statement. So x equals zero only makes sense for the top row here. So we're gonna plug in x equals zero for the top. We're going to have 0 squared minus 4 over 0 minus 2. And this gives us negative 4 over negative 2 equals positive 2. So now we're looking for h of 2. And finally, we could use the bottom row here because x equals 2. This is a situation where we have an input value of 2. 2 equals 2 is a true statement. We can't say this is true up here. 2 is not equal to 2 is a false statement. So it only makes sense to plug in x equals two at the bottom here. And what they're saying is that when x is equal to two, that means the y value is equal to six. Okay, so the bottom row gets used exactly once. And this bottom row over here is really just saying that the point two comma six is on the graph of h of x. Okay, so that's what this means. It seems a little confusing how it's written sort of backwards here, but that's the meaning of this row in the piecewise function. So that's how we should interpret it. And then finally, we have h of 3. h of 3, we're just going to plug into the top row here. We're going to have 3 squared minus 4 over 3 minus 2. And this is going to work out. We're going to have 9 minus 4 over 3 minus 2 is 1. And then 9 minus 4 is 5, and 5 divided by 1 is 5. So h of 3 is equal to 5. Now, one extra detail here. You may have noticed that h of x, the top part of the function, is factorable. And if you factor x squared minus 4 to x plus 2 times x minus 2, and we have over x minus 2 like this, that we could actually simplify this expression, and this simplifies to x plus 2. But we should mention here that this is true as long as x is not equal to positive 2. So h of x, we could actually rewrite this in different form here. We could say that this is just equal to x plus 2 as long as x is not equal to 2. And then we have x is equal to 2 in the bottom row would give us a y value of 6. Okay, and if we look at those other function values, notice that we have when x is negative 5, y is negative 3. But if I plugged in here, negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. If I plug in 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, which matches this. And if I were to plug in 2, I'm still going to get 6. But then when I plug in 3, 3 plus 2, if I plug in here, is going to give us 5. Okay, so this is just a little bit extra that you can simplify piecewise functions, but make sure that you do keep the domain intact here. This line here is very important 
just to make sure that you're saying these functions here, you're representing them in equivalent form. 